you know, if you have vacation days, take them. Don't work through your holidays. And sick days, if you're sick, be at home and recover. Um, set some boundaries. So what that means is sometimes people don't like that idea of boundaries. It's like, oh, I don't want to kind of cage myself off. But what it means is learning to say no. Don't say, okay, sure, I'll do it. I'll do it. I know I'm guilty of doing that in my family and also at my work. Um, sure, I can do it. And even when I know this is going to be really hard for me to do and it's going to take up more time than I have, I have been in the habit of doing that. And so learning to say, no, I can't do it or not right now, or I can do some of that. Or you know what? My great colleague here can help you with that. Or um, my partner or my significant other can actually take the kids skating because he's better at it than me anyway and I don't need to be there. So let go of that perfectionism. That comes from perfectionism. There's a lot of research on the link between perfectionism and anxiety, obviously, because we want to be perfect and it's not possible. And so we worry about it. So try to let go of it. And recognize you're not the only person who can do this. Know it often feels like that. I was pretty convinced of it. Probably am convinced of it that I'm the best person to intervene on behalf of my own child. Um, and, you know, the, the father, you know, it's not going to be as good. My parents are not going to be as good. The teacher is not going to be as good. Nobody else is going to be as good as me is how I feel most of the time. But I also am not the only one who can do it. So let other people try to do it and seek supervision. So for parents seeking support and for professionals and paraprofessionals, seek that supervision. And by supervision, I don't mean evaluation. I mean somebody coming in who has knowledge in this field, who can listen to you, who can debrief with you, who can help validate what you're experiencing and let you know what you need or hear what you need maybe. That's better. Hear what you need and help provide you with what you need. And notice the joys and accomplishments. If you do work outside of the home or inside of the home, notice what you do well and pay attention to it. And again, I can be like this. It goes with perfectionism. So probably a little bit over disclosure here, but that's good. I'm, I'm, amongst, I'm amongst parents and friends. So, um, but, you know, perfectionistic people and people who stress themselves out do something, they do it well, and someone says, that's really great. And then they're like, yeah, good. What was the one bad thing about it, right? So we shift to that. And that's part of our evolution that we're biased towards looking for threat and looking for negative. And we have to shift ourselves to appreciating what we do well and what we accomplish. Okay. So make time for what's important to you. I mean, what a concept is this? Nietzsche um, said, he who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. Um, you know, some people who don't really understand Nietzsche, and I'm not going to do a spiel on existential philosophy, but they might say something like, well, you know, there's no meaning in life. There's no greater this. And the next thing, that's actually the, the, wrong, the wrong message. It's like you need to find your meaning in life and direct yourself towards it because if you can find it, you're going to have a great life, no matter anything else that's going on. So find that meaning. And so, um, you know, I'd invite you actually, as I'm saying this, to do this right now. So identify what is most important for you in life. And one of the activities we do in a mindfulness program is work through exercises on helping you look at what your values are, what your goals are. And then thinking about once you've had some help, because not everybody is familiar with like, what is that? What is a value? What is a goal, right? Could be things like achievement could be a value. Um, having, being connected with others could be a value. Um, and then think about how much time are you spending on those things? So if being connected with others is a value and you're isolating yourself and just spending time with your child and their therapist, you are not working towards that. And so then the next thing you would do is you would create a plan of how am I going to dedicate time towards working towards or spending time in goals that are towards my values. Remember the you before you had children. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> when we were watching that video of the parent perspective, the first one, and it had the parent and the husband, and, you know, they were very attractive people and everything. And then it shot back to when they were young. And it reminded me of me, you know, when I, when I maybe right before having happy the child, how sort of young, and, and it's not just about age, it's sort of like 
a different, a different person then. So remember that before you had children and do you make any time for her or him? You know, do you? And, um, and, and maybe your goals have changed since then, but are you still like, are you still there? Are you more than mom to Bobby or parent who goes to the school? Like, who are you? and dedicate at least some time to things that you value even if no one else in the family does. Um, one thing, for example, with me is I used to love skiing. And um, I did skiing every weekend when I was in high school and I even worked in a school as a high school teacher and I was like the head of the ski team and took the kids skiing and all that. And after I had my first child, I stopped doing it. I didn't go skiing. We tried once actually, and I gave him to his father to deal with because I didn't want to have to. And he said, I'm never doing it again. And so we just didn't go. But then much later, I started skiing again. And I remembered how much I love skiing. You know, like I'm not great at it or anything. I don't do the big moguls, but I really, really loved it. So can you spend some time doing that? And partly too was my partner didn't really care about skiing and, you know, the kids, the kids were difficult, at least at that time for me to take skiing. So find someone else to go with, which I have done. And mind your mind. How'd you like that? I came up with that. Probably not unique though. Uh, mind your mind. Consider your mind. So what are some psychological and emotional self-care things you can do? Finding ways to escape when needed. So that's one strategy. You don't want to always escape, but you certainly have to find time to and do something like say, create a safe space for yourself. We do this with kids. If kids are fleeing and bolting from the school, we don't just say, well, run after them and grab them and drag them back in. I mean, you might have to do that on occasion, especially if it's dangerous. But what you want to do is provide a safe place they can flee to, right? And then they're not gonna run in the street. So think of that for yourself too. Where is a safe place for you? I mean, I, men, some men have this, what's it called, man room or something? Man cave? Where's the man in here? Whatever you guys have. <laughs> They're being quiet. Ma male cave or man cave. And now I've heard of the she shed, and I think that is so cool, right? <laughs> I want the she shed. Like you've got your own shed, and you've got your art in there, and I'd probably have my little tiny, you know, measured glass of wine and one piece of chocolate. But find your own space that you can go to. Um, the, and similarly, at the workplace, you're in a workplace and it's stressful. Where can you go? to take a breath. Say yes to downtime and fun. Like, hey, Deborah says, do you wanna go, um, you know, I don't know, have pizza? Sure, <laughs> right? Do you wanna go watch a comedy? Like, that's really, really helpful. See a theater or a play when we're not gonna get the COVID? Awesome. Spending time in nature, there's a whole, um, well, there's all kinds of stuff on nature therapy. Um, nature, bathing, etc. And at first I kind of thought, oh, this is a bit hokey, you know, weird BC kind of stuff probably. Um, but there is research of how effective it is. And so just, spent, just being in nature can be highly nourishing. Um, and I'm going to explain an activity a bit later that you can do with that. But being in it is, is, is curative. I uh, mentioned the safe space, finding ways to relax. So for yourself, what works? So it may be yoga. I've tried yoga. I'm not great at yoga, but I do find it very, very helpful. Um, and it's not competitive, which I also like. I mean, that's the great thing about it is you don't, you just do what you're able to do. And it does work on a lot of mindfulness and self-awareness at the same time. Uh, progressive muscle relaxation, and you can work through that. Taking a bubble bath and meditating, for example. So the point is, find what relaxes you. And if possible, do this preventatively. So build it into your schedule, just like our kids. We say build in through the schedule some things that are going to help them regulate throughout the day, not just after they've had the meltdown, because when they're having the meltdown or when you're having the meltdown, and I've heard people say to me, Georgina, calm down. I don't want to calm down. I'm mad and you know, I want to run around and scream and do all this stuff, right? When you are upset, you're not, usually not very receptive to it. So do it preventatively. Do something physical, so running, walking, um, silly dance. That's something I teach in my classes and it's really, really fun because everybody faces the wall. They're not looking at each other. And you put on like wild music and you just Go for it. It's so awesome. It's so freeing. So do the silly dance 
with or without people watching, because I was doing that one time at a university with windows, and I noticed the, you know, first-year students walking by thinking we'd lost it, and yeah, yeah, we had. Um, find some expression outfits. So for you, outlets, it might be art, it might be music, it might be horseback riding. So ways that you can express yourself, and you don't have to be, like, great at it. You can paint something just because the painting is, is an outlet for you. Pay attention to what's going well. So notice what is going well in your life. Practicing gratitude, and I'm going to lead you through a little exercise on this. Um, this is something, I mean, even, I guess Oprah's probably talked about it, and um, Dr. Oz has talked about it, and you hear about it. Oh, be, have gratitude. And I think some people just think, oh, that's some dumb thing. It's really a good thing to do, and there is good research on practicing gratitude and how, like, they've done studies where they've taken, this person's showing no gratitude, they're not trying to practice it. This person's keeping a gratitude journal where every day, and this is something you can do, write down even one or two things that you're grateful for. Now, you might, some suggestions are, find one or two really big things and one or two little things, but I would say just start with little things like, I'm grateful that I don't have the COVID right now. I'm great. I mean, that's actually pretty big. I'm grateful that it's going to, you know, the sun has come out when it does. Um, I'm grateful for this really awesome cappuccino that I had. So it doesn't have to be big because every time you activate gratefulness, it also activates positive emotions and it helps you be um, healthier and become aware of and manage your emotions. I have said that before. You have to recognize your emotions and then learn to manage them. So here's the thing on the grateful. Um, the, I've given you, I think it's in your handout, the link to something I'm going to suggest you can try. It's called thanks4.org, T-H-N-X-4.org. And it's through the um, Greater Good website, which is at University of California, Berkeley. Um, so you can go to that. I have the, all those links at the, at the end, the, the references. But that's an online gratitude journal you can do if you like doing things on your computer and they actually prompt you every day, what are you grateful for? What are you grateful for? And you can share things with people because it's not only grateful, but you can let people know. Because that's another thing, you know. There's been so many times in my life when people have done things for me that I'm grateful for and I may not have said anything to them. And so taking that time to say thanks to somebody and express your gratitude is not only helpful for them, but it's actually helpful for you.